We now have more information about the Clinton Foundation and to what degree it affected the work of uh, Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State. Uh, news is not good. Okay, so first of all, uh, there's been a lot of freedom of information requests uh, that has resulted in this news. Some of those requests were uh, done by conservative organizations. That is irrelevant. What is relevant is the information that is real and truthful. Now, whenever you're getting from a conservative website, you should be careful because a lot of that stuff is not truthful. These are actual emails that were sent. So there's no question to their uh, validity. So, uh, Mediate explains that conservative activist group Citizens United, as you might imagine, I'm not a big fan of them, but they, they're an actual group. That's what the Supreme Court case was about. Uh, they're a conservative group. They obtained State Department Chief of Staff Cheryl Mills' call logs through a Freedom of Information Act and found 148 messages from the Clinton Foundation Chief Operating Officer Laura Graham. So understand this, the Chief of Staff for Hillary Clinton at the State Department is getting nearly 150 messages from uh, the Chief Operating Officer of the Clinton Foundation. Now remember, Hillary Clinton, if you don't know, she should be going over to become Secretary of State, part of the Clinton Foundation and says, okay, now that I'm going over there, I know that I had a lot of dealings with rich people, corporations, and foreign governments at the Clinton Foundation, which is a charity that we're running out of the goodness of our hearts, which is somewhat true and somewhat not as true, uh, which I'll explain in a second. Uh, and she says, but as I'm going over to the State Department, I will not be influenced by what, but what I, by what I did at the Clinton Foundation at all. And I'm going to sign a letter saying we're totally independent of that, don't care about the donors there or anything else. I'm just Secretary of State here. Now all of a sudden we found out, wait a minute, now there's 150 emails uh, from you know your chief of staff to the Clinton Foundation's chief operating officer. Seems like that might be a little involved, but wait, 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 we got a lot more where that came from. Um, they explained further, with calls more than once a week on average, no other individuals or nonprofits called Mills nearly as frequently. So the number one person or organization, I should say, calling and, and emailing the Secretary of State was the Clinton Foundation. What happened? I thought you guys were separated and there was no relationship between the two. Mm, doesn't seem that separate. All right, Mills' connection with the Clinton Foundation has recently undergone scrutiny after newly released emails showed she spent a weekend interviewing candidates for leadership positions in a nonprofit while still employed at the State Department. The Clinton campaign maintains that Mills only volunteered uh, her personal time to a charitable organization. Now look, let's get to the question of is this a real charitable organization? Part one of that answer is absolutely. They, it's not like they're pocketing the money like Trump did with his charities. No, no, they're, they're spending a lot of the money on charity and it is absolutely worthy charities. Now, that's all you'll hear in the mainstream media. The part they don't tell you because it's, oh, it's uncomfortable is the Clinton campaign also houses a lot of their staff in the Clinton Foundation. And so that they get to pay all their staff through that Clinton Foundation. And then if they get back into office, oh, well, look at that. Oh, there's all my staff ready to go. And there, here we go. We're going to move them, a lot of them, to the White House. So it's both. It's, I mean, look, you could house your staff in a more nefarious organization. At least they're helping people. I'm giving you both sides of the story, okay? And they, these are both real. So they have a political motive for it. But they also have a charitable motive for it. The question becomes, are these things intertwined so that when you give money to the Clinton Foundation, even though it's going for charity, you really, some of them are giving it for access to the Clintons. Is that going to affect the Clintons when they're in office? So for example, when she is Secretary of State. Now, one of the papers in Boston did a great job of calling this out. And I like their, I, I believe, somewhat tongue-in-cheek um, comment in their editorial uh, asking for them to stop the Clinton Foundation. They're like, well, if all these corporations and, and governments like the Saudi government and, and, uh, and others uh, want to give to charity, I'm sure there's other charities they can give to. Now, they're not giving just for charity, not even a lot of them not predominantly for charity. They're giving money for access to the Clintons. So when you have her Secretary uh, of State's uh, chief of staff, then doing interviews for that foundation, it doesn't look like you've separated. Even if you did it for what you view to be charitable reasons, don't do that. That appears to be a conflict of interest. Now, how much does that affect them? Maybe they take the calls, but do they take any action? Okay, now we get to that part of the story. Um, Law News explains, 
Uh, the 20 Hillary Clinton newly released work-related emails include an exchange between Clinton and Abedin, that is her, one of her top staffers, Huma Abedin, in which they discussed delaying the Secretary of State's charter jet to fit in a 15-minute meeting with a billionaire businessman and contributor, Danny Abraham. According to the New York Post, Abraham donated between $5 million and $10 million to the Clinton Foundation. Hmm, I wonder if they squeezed it in. Well, let's see. Well, so here's this exchange in the emails. Abedin says, Danny Abraham called this morning, he's in D.C. today and tomorrow, and asked for 15 minutes with you. Do you want me to try and fit him in tomorrow? So again, Clinton as Secretary of State. She says, will the plane wait if I can't get there before 7 to 8? Abedin, yes, of course. Now, look, it wasn't automatic, to be fair to them. It wasn't like, oh, Danny Abraham, my boss, called, so I'm going to take the meeting. They had a discussion about it. But are they going to fit in that donor to the Clinton Foundation into Secretary of State's Clinton schedule? Of course, of course they're going to fit her in. But a, a small side note here, the crazies on the right say that Huma Abedin is some sort of Muslim sleeper agent. So that Muslim sleeper agent is helping to squeeze in a call from a Jewish donor uh, who uh, is very pro-Israel before a meeting uh, that Secretary Clinton has with the Foreign Minister of Israel. Hmm, that doesn't seem to make much sense at all. Okay, you can't have it both ways. It can't be some sort of secret right-wing Israeli plot and a secret right-wing Muslim plot. Okay, so pick your conspiracy theory. Now, this is not a conspiracy. This is simple, obvious things. Like, if you give five to ten million dollars, you're gonna get a hearing. <laughs> now, if you give it to her campaign, you're gonna get heard. If you give it to the Clinton Foundation, you're gonna get heard. And so the Clinton people will say, yeah, of course, come on, the guy gave 10 million bucks to my charity, I gave him 15 minutes, that, isn't that fair? And that all went for a good cause. Others will look at it and go, no, 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 those guys bought access to you, they get to whisper things in your ear that is relevant in your decision making for all of us. And that's not fair, that's what we're worried about when we say systemic corruption. So what did Abraham want to talk about? Well, the content of his conversations are not in the email, so we don't know. Abraham is giving to Clinton, presumably he's on the left in America. I don't know what his position on Israel is, but Danny Abraham, according to the email from Huma Abedin, Danny Abraham wants to talk to you about Israel, ideally before you see Lieberman. Who's Lieberman? Avigdor Lieberman is the foreign minister of Israel. No, no, that, okay, that's unacceptable. I don't know if Danny Abraham is a right winger on Israel or he's a left winger on Israel. Lieberman, we know, the foreign minister of Israel at the time, total right winger. So maybe Abraham is saying to Hillary Clinton, go get him, like, yes, listen to whatever Lieberman says and do whatever he says. Or maybe he's saying the opposite. Oh, hell no, Lieberman's a nut, don't listen to anything he says. Either way, it is unacceptable. You can't have a donor demanding to meet with you before you meet with the foreign minister of another country and then telling you his opinion on it. Does that mean that his opinion then immediately gets you know, turned into U.S. policy? No, 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 we don't live in a black and white world. But does it mean that Hillary Clinton takes that under advisement and knows that if she does the right thing, she continues to get Clinton Foundation uh, charitable uh, money from Abraham and later contributions to her campaign and in other instances, speeches that she gets to put in her own pocket, money she gets to put away for her family? Of course it means that. That's the whole problem with systemic corruption. No, we can't have this. I honestly have no idea what Danny Abraham's opinions are on Israel. But I don't want to know. I don't want Hillary Clinton to know. And I don't want him to be able to buy that influence for 5 to $10 million. Okay, so now it's not just that one guy. I mean, it's slews of people. So now we go to Clinton Foundation executive Doug Ben to Huma Abedin, top aide for Hillary Clinton. Crown Prince of Bahrain in tomorrow, in tomorrow to Friday, uh, asking to see Clinton, good friend of ours. So, Clinton Foundation person going, remember the Crown Prince of Bahrain is a good friend of ours. And I'm going to show you why he's such a good friend in a second. <laughs> like, hey, Doug, Huma knows that he's a good friend. You didn't have to bother writing that in the email, but thank you for the clarity. Okay, according to the Clinton Foundation website, the Crown Prince established a scholarship fund for the Clinton Global Initiative that had contributed $32 million by 2010. 
By the way, that $32 million uh, only bought him 10 minutes. Mm, I don't know if that's such a great investment, but look at what people are willing to pay. You think that the Crown Prince of Bahrain is giving to the Clinton uh, Fund just because he cares about charity? He couldn't find any other charity? And, uh, and you think that that 10-minute meeting that he's asking for with, from Hillary Clinton is not related to the money he gave? <laughs> Come on. If you think that, you're in, like either the most naive person on the planet or you don't know anything about politics or the real world. It's not to say again that the Crown Prince of Bahrain gets to stand, you know, set our policies in America, but does he get some influence? Does he get a hearing? Yeah, $32 million to the Clinton Foundation gets you that influence. That's again the unacceptable part. So let me uh, give that detail. Offering Bahrain um, uh, Crown Prince 10 tomorrow, uh, Abedin writes back to band. Uh, for meeting uh, with uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton. If you see him, let him know we have reached out through official channels. Now, I read that to you because uh, Abedin wanted to make it official. She's like, oh, now, if we wanted to meet uh, that person from a different country, the crown prince of that country, we would do that through official channels through the State Department. Oh, that good friend of ours requested it. Make sure he requests it through the official channels. Why am I doing the maniacal winking? Because if why is this going through the Clinton Foundation? If if he was just doing it through official channels, he would do it through it official channels, and we'd have a, our Secretary of State meet with the Crown Prince of Bahrain. That's perfectly normal. But he's she's getting the note from the Clinton Foundation saying, "Remember the guy gave us thirty-two million bucks." Okay, that's why he's getting the meeting, not because the United States of America needed to meet with the leader of Bahrain or one of the leaders of Bahrain. Okay. So now, it's not all bad news. Sometimes it'd be a no. Uh, so there was another very um, uh, wealthy donor who uh, gave uh, money to the Clinton Foundation, and then they were uh, asking for a soccer team that they own to get visas. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Huma Abedin says, I got this now. Makes me nervous to get involved, but I'll ask. Okay, like she's saying this might be a bridge too far. It's one thing to meet with the Prince of Bahrain and our donors, but to try to get visas for the soccer team. Uh, and then Band writes back, he's from the Clinton Foundation, says, then don't. Don't. Okay. Hey, hey, one time they did the right thing. God bless. Now, to be fair, I'm sure it's not one time. But apparently they have boundaries, and that's where the boundaries are. So now, one more look here at an overall picture to give you a sense of the problem. Because if it's just a couple of emails about the one donor and the, the crown prince, yeah. But I already told you that her chief of staff is taking the most amount of calls and emails from the Clinton Foundation. Now, is this part of the story. At least 85 out of the 154 people from private interest who met or had conversations scheduled with Clinton while she led the State Department donated to her family charity or pledged commitments to its international programs according to a review of State Department calendars released so far to the Associated Press. I did the math, that's more than half. So more than half the people she met with had given money to the Clinton Foundation. <laughs> you think that there is no connection. No, you can't think that. The only way you'd think that is if you're a Clinton loyalist or you're a mainstream press and you're like, no, nope, no, nope, you didn't prove it 100%, you only proved it 98%. Okay. Uh, I can't say it on air. I can't say the Clinton people will yell at me. I can't say it on air. Well, I can say it on air. Okay. Uh, they explained combined, the 85 donors contributed as much as $156 million. Yeah, that'll get you a lot of meetings with the Clintons. So, um, Media explains that number doesn't include the representatives of 16 foreign governments that donated $170 million to the Clinton Foundation and later met with the Secretary. So, two different sets of people here. Now, the foreign governments, as Secretary of State, you're likely to meet with those people anyway, but as you saw in the Bahrain uh, scenario, maybe you do it even when you weren't supposed to because they asked for it and they asked through the Clinton Foundation, which they give a lot of money to. And are you going to give them a little extra weight after they gave to your family charity? Well, <laughs> it would be surprising if you didn't. And these people are not all suckers. Some of these people are the richest people in the world. They're not throwing the money away. It's an investment because they think that that access will make them more money. Plus, 
they are wonderfully charitable. And I, you know, I, I say that with some degree of sarcasm, but the reality is that it's both. Look, some of them are charitable, some are more charitable, some are less charitable, but they also know that it buys them access. Okay, so, but for the private donors, well, they weren't necessarily going to meet with Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State. They're not like the foreign governments, but they got to meet with her anyway because overall they gave her $156 million. Finally, again, Mediate explains here, many of the donors who met with Clinton sought specific favors. Wall Street executive Stephen Schwartzman, for example, donated between $250,000 and $500,000 and later met with Clinton in a 2009 breakfast meeting. The next day, emails show the State Department was working on a visa issue at Schwartzman's request. And that's how this game is played. And that's exactly why the American people hate this game. They can't stand it. This is the establishment at its best and worst. And this is why the American people want change. Because it's not that Hillary Clinton is a particularly evil person. And remember, the money goes to charity and the charity does go to wonderful things that helps the poor, the needy, the sick throughout the world. They're not like, -ha 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 -ha, we are evil, we were, you know, hatch this plot and take over the world and do one world governments and bring in black helicopters. None of that stuff is true. But at the same time, you do us a favor, we do you a favor while we're in government and supposed to be representing the American people. That is corruption and it is sickening and it is our current system. That's why we all want to change it.